My name is Kitty Canhoffin and today we're going to be talking about croc spoons. Now in this tutorial we're going to show you different colors that they come in and the sizes, how to set them up on a fishing rod and then how to catch fish with them effectively. So crocs are a very versatile spoon just because they can catch so many different species in British Columbia. Salmon, steelhead, trout, char. Uh, they're also good in many different bodies of water. We've caught fish using them in different lakes, rivers and even off the beach. These lures start at 1 16th ounce and go all the way up to three ounce. They also come in many different colors. So some of them have a hammered pattern and some are smooth. Also, they have a bright fire stripe on it. They go from green stripes, blue stripes. Some are pure, pure gold, some are nickel. They also have ones that look like a rainbow trout pattern. When using these lures, I like to attach them uh, to the line with an improved clinch knot. Now, as you can see, there's nothing else on the fishing line because the lure doesn't need it. If you add any additional weight, uh, that will actually throw off the action of the lure in the water and it won't uh, swim properly. Also too, with spoons, you never need to use them under a float. Uh, they're just simply attached onto the fishing line with this knot. So the croc that you see here in my hands, it already comes with a split ring that's attached to it first and then a swivel. So to do this, the improved clinch knot, you're going to take your swivel and the bit of leader that you have here. And you're going to push the leader through that top circle of the swivel. Now I take my, my left hand and I pinch right at the top. Uh, I make a sideways V with it, with the line. And I'm going to wrap my line around the main line about six, six to seven times. So once I've wrapped it, I have this little piece here at the top. And that little loop that I pinched with my other hand, I'm going to put that line through that hole, pinch again, and then the line's going to come back through that big loop. Now, by sliding it with your teeth, um, that helps friction so the line doesn't snap. And you just pull it in opposite directions to create a knot. And then this piece here, the little tag, you just want to cut it to make the knot clean. So now that I have tied the croc on, let me show you different methods of retrieving it. So whenever you're using lures, it's really important that you check the depth of whatever body of water you're fishing. Um, that's just because the first thing with a lure, what you should do is you should give it time to sink because the fish are going to be deeper, especially in, they want to be in cooler, deeper water. And uh, if you have the spoon way too high, close to the surface, you're not going to catch anything. So by letting it sink, it puts it to where the fish are, but you just want to be careful that you don't let it sink too much because then you'll just be joining the logs or whatever is sitting at the bottom of of wherever you're fishing. So once your spoon is, is sunk, I usually wait about, depending uh, again how deep it is, but about five seconds or so. And then I just do a slow retrieval. So just by spinning the handle of the reel nice and slowly to give the spoon a nice wobble, that is one way of retrieving it. But uh, sometimes the fish, they don't want to see that. Um, another way that they might like is by jigging. So what jigging is, you cast it out again, just like you're about to retrieve it. You let it sink. And then instead of reeling and having your rod low to the water, you bring your rod up to the sky and then reel and let it drop. What this is imitating is an injured fish that's in the water or that's maybe swimming around. And uh, fish, they're very, very attracted to it and they'll, they'll try to eat it. So jigging, again, it's by, by casting out letting your spoon sink a little bit, bring your rod up to the sky, reeling and letting it fall down so the spoon is fluttering down, and then lifting the rod up again, reeling, letting the spoon flutter down. And usually I find that when the spoon is actually fluttering down, that's when most of the fish hit. And you can do a slow jig or a fast jig, just uh, depending on the body of water that you're fishing. So in rivers, I like to use a quicker jig just because the water is moving and I don't want to get caught up on the bottom. But if the water is really deep at lakes, I like to give it lots of time to sink and then do slow jigs so that it spends more time uh, in, in uh, the depth of the water. So for more information on Gibbs Croc Spoons, you can check out our website at gibbsdelta.com. And please follow us on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram.